Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever it is, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome back to Slay Pilates. I'm Jenny, and I'm going to take you through another reformer workout today where we'll be using the box a little bit and possibly the ball. We'll see how far we get. To start with footwork today, I'm going to have two heavy springs and a medium spring. So in my case, that's two reds and a blue, but whatever reformer you have, two heavy and one medium spring. Go ahead and let's turn to face the foot bar, lower ourselves down onto our back, bring the shoulders against the shoulder rest, feet to the foot bar. We're gonna start in Pilates V with our heels together, toes apart, arms lengthen down by the side. Inhale to press the carriage out. Exhale to find that resistance as you draw it back into the stoppers. Moving with your breath here, making sure that you have a nice neutral spine, which means the sacrum is heavy, the shoulder blades are heavy, the back of the skull is heavy, and we're pressing actively into our heels to turn on those inner thighs and find that nice midline flexion as you press out, you feel that zipping up the midline, and as you come in, you feel that same resistance in your inner thighs because we're keeping those heels pressing firmly together. Really use that exhale to help you put on those brakes as the springs are pulling you back in. One more here. We'll draw the carriage to a close. Stay in this Pilates V position. We're going to inhale as we tilt the pelvis in toward the belly button and begin to round up into a pelvic lift. And then exhale to roll down. We're going to do three total here, so two more. We want to keep that carriage from pulling away from the stoppers. So find that feeling as you're rolling up of pulling your sacrum toward your heels. Turning on those hamstrings to help keep the carriage closed. Roll up this time, pause. Now we're gonna inhale to press ourselves out long. Exhale to draw the carriage in. Keeping those hips nice and lifted. We're pulling the abdominals in and up so we feel that corseting effect. Our ribs aren't splaying out, they're really pulling in tight. Two more. Last one, come on in, round down one vertebrae at a time. We'll separate those heels out, move up to the arches of the foot. Arms will lengthen down again, we'll inhale to press out, exhale to come in. Thinking about that bird on a perch, so we're wrapping our foot around the foot bar, reaching the toes over, reaching the heels under, finding length as we press the legs out, Feeling those inner thighs sizzling in toward each other. You want to keep those knees moving along the midline. So we have to make sure that we're really using those inner thighs to keep that proper alignment as we move. Again, make sure that you're using that exhale to put on those brakes. Create that extra resistance. We don't have heavy springs on today. So we're going to have to create a little bit of that resistance ourselves. The next time you draw the carriage to a close, pause. We're going to go into our bridges, tilting the pelvis in, rolling up one vertebrae at a time, and then exhaling to melt down. We're going to feel that energy begin to shoot out our knees as we come up to a bridge, feeling that length from the tips of the shoulder blades all the way out the knees, shooting out toward that wall in front of you, and then back down. Again, if you find that you're peeling away from the stoppers, then go ahead and pull those heels towards your sits bones. Round up one more time. We're going to pause here at the top. Press those hips high. Make sure they're nice and even. Inhale to press out. Exhale in. Two more. The last one. Pull in, round yourself down. Move on up to your heels, find an actively flexed foot. 
Inhale to press the carriage away. Exhale to pull it in. Returning on that back chain of energy here. Really grounding those heels into the foot bar. Taking some of this work out of our quads and trying to put it in that back chain of energy. So if you place your hands right where your hamstrings and your glutes meet, you should really feel those muscles nice and active as you press out and then turning back on as you draw the carriage closed. Let's do two more here, out and in, out and in, and now keeping those heels firmly planted, begin to round up into your bridge and then exhale to lower down one vertebrae at a time. Inhaling up, pulling those heels toward the sits bones, turning on those hammies, keeping that carriage nice and still. Last one, round up and hold, press out and in. Keeping that lift, squeezing into those glutes. Two more. The last one here. Pull in and melt down. Let's take the feet wide on the foot bar. Back down to the ball of the foot, heels find a slight turn in, so we're in a turn out position. And we're gonna find a high heel. Inhale to press out, exhale in. Maintain that high heel as you move here. As you press those legs out long, squeeze into those calves for just a moment. And then resist in. Make sure that one leg isn't doing more work than the other here. We all have that dominant side. Let's take a moment to really sense into our legs and try to even out that workload. Two more. Last one. Draw the carriage in. And once again, we're going to begin to round up and then melt down. Nice and slow and controlled. This one I think is the most challenging as far as keeping the carriage closed. So really turn on those hamstrings and work to find that feeling, pulling the heels in toward the sits bones. On this next one, we peel up and we hold. Inhale to press out. Exhale in. Are you still in that high heel? If you're not, press on up. Lift those heels up and hold. Two more. Last one, pull in and hold for a moment. And now we're gonna drop the right heel and lift. Drop left and lift. Right, lift, left, lift. Last one right, last one left, and melt that spine down. Let's pull the knees in toward the chest for just a moment, rock side to side. Bring the feet down to the center of the foot bar, back onto the ball of the foot, press your legs out long, and we're just gonna go into heel, lower, and lift. Making sure that as you're lowering and lifting here, the weight of that foot is resting in the big toe and second toe. We want it on that inside of the foot, not rolling out to the pinky edge. Really enjoy that stretch up the back of the legs. Your heel drops low under the foot bar. And then press on up using those calves. I'm going to keep going for several more here. We're really going to find that burn. Three more. Two more. 
Last one, and go ahead and go on into running. Dropping one heel, lifting the other. Now, drop that left heel. We're going to take the right foot off the foot bar, come up under and wrap the toes around. Now, give a gentle pull, getting deeper into the back of that left leg. Bring the right foot back onto the foot bar, drop the right heel. We'll take the left toes under and around, gentle pull, and enjoy that stretch. Place the left foot back on the foot bar. We'll draw the carriage to a close. Really fast before we move on, I want you to now tuck those toes and we'll place the top of those toes against the bar and just press gently. Press that ankle forward. Feel that glorious stretch. We just don't stretch these tendons enough. And this is a really great way to do it. If you want more later on, you can take off the two red springs. You just have one blue. And you can actually press out and in in this position. It feels so good. Go ahead and bring your feet to that foot bar. We're going to set up for our five ab series. So I want you to scoot away from your shoulder rest just a little bit. We're going to pull the right knee in toward the chest. Hands go on top of the shin. Lengthen the left leg out. Curl the head, neck, and shoulders up. From here, I'm going to gently pull and switch. Exhaling. Every time I switch legs, I'm pressing my shin into my hands, my hands into my shin, and I'm pulling my belly button down toward the carriage. So I have that nice imprinted back. As my leg reaches forward, I'm pointing those toes and actively reaching toward the wall in front of me, finding that length. One more each side. Last left, come on in, one hand onto either shin, knees are pulled in, inhale as you lengthen arms and legs away, exhale, pulling the knees in, wrapping those arms back around and hugging in. Inhale and exhale. Now we're finding that opposition between where the toes are reaching and the fingertips are reaching. Finding that length in the body, keeping the lower back imprinted, pulling that belly button in, and then swooping around. Again, you can press those shins into the hands, hands into the shins, before you go and lengthen out again. Two more. Last one. Now here, let's bring the hands behind the head, one hand over the other, pinkies at the base of the skull, extend the legs straight up. We're going to inhale as we lower the legs away. Strong exhale to draw them back up to the ceiling. Looking in towards your inner thighs. Keeping that lower back imprinted. If you start to feel any arching in the lower back, then just make your movement a little bit smaller. You might be going too big too fast. Elbows are nice and wide. We're not pulling or pushing the head up. We're just supporting it. Last one here. Release the hands. Hands walk up to either the right calf or ankle. Drop the left leg away. We'll pull twice. Exhale and switch. We're keeping those legs moving along the midline. They're not falling out or in as we switch. Getting that nice stretch up the back of the leg as you tug, 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 tug. One more right and left. Draw the knees in, hands come back behind the head. Extend that left leg out long. Left armpit comes up toward the right knee and we switch, switch, switch. Keeping head, neck, and shoulders lifted. And I want you to think about drawing the armpit toward that opposite knee. We don't want the elbow. If we take the elbow, we're not twisting. We really want to get that twist in the trunk as we're moving here.
floor right and left rest back down let your arms fall out to a T drop your legs right and left right and left and if you're lucky you'll get a little adjustment oh. let's sit ourselves on up and we're going to drop down to just one blue and one red so drop one of your heavy springs we have one heavy and one medium spring. Come back down to lying, and we're gonna set up for supine arms. We'll grab onto our short straps. <clears throat> Legs will drop to a tabletop position. We'll press those arms forward. We're gonna inhale to lower the palms toward the carriage. Exhale to float the fingertips up to the ceiling. Abdominals are pulling in and up. We have a nice neutral spine. The entire body is still and stable except for our arms moving here. Let's add on a little bit, float those arms up, extend the legs out, inhale as you press down, pulling knees in, exhale, legs and arms extend up and out. Last one here. Pause and hold with your legs out, fingertips reaching up. Pull that belly button to the spine and lower those legs down. Let's let the arms drop out to T position. Draw the knees back up to tabletop, palms face the wall in front of you. And we're going to squeeze those palms in toward the hips and then float them back out. Inhaling to contract those muscles under the armpit exhaling to find resistance as you float those arms back to T. Two more like this, and then we'll add on our legs. Last one, float those arms out, extend the legs out long, knees pull in, arms pull in, legs extend, arms extend. more. Last one. Hold here, arms out at that T, legs are extended, pressing gently into those straps, keeping the elbows and wrists in alignment, and go ahead and rest the legs down. You can pull the arms in, just let them hang out for a moment. Arms extend back up to the ceiling, legs come to tabletop, Press those palms down to hover at about hip height by your sides, and we'll go into triceps, bending at the elbow, fingertips float up, and then press the arms out long. Inhaling and exhaling. If you need a little more stability, you can always press the upper arm into the carriage. Next time the fingertips float up, pause. Extend the legs out, we'll press the arms down, knees pull in, and release. Two more. Last one. Hold, fingertips are up to the ceiling. Arms are probably shaking a little bit. Squeeze those upper arms in closer to your body. And release down. Arms fall out to a T. Knees drop to the right. Look to the left. And breathe. Knees drop to the left. Look to the right. Last thing we'll do here. Bring the legs back up to tabletop and we'll go into some arm circles. So arms are gonna lower down, circling out around and back up. This is not a huge movement. We wanna keep this nice and controlled. 
Breathing slowly. One more this direction, and then we'll switch. Dropping the arms out, lowering them down, pulling them into the body and floating them back up. Two more. Last one. Nice. Go ahead and pull the carriage close. Feet can come to the foot bar and we'll hang those straps up. Let's go ahead and sit ourselves up. We're going to drop one red spring, so we just have one blue arm, and we're going to go into some lunging work. So we're going to come to standing. If I'm facing the back of my reformer, I'm going to be on the left side of the reformer, and I'm going to grab on to my short strap with my left hand. From here, I want to step forward slightly. So if the carriage is closed, I'm just behind the shoulder rest. I'm going to angle myself slightly toward that back right corner. And now I'm going to step my right foot back. What we're going to go, do here is go into a split squat. So let's start with both hands interlaced and that strap being held between them. We have this split position. And now I'm going to pull the strap in toward my chest. And all I'm going to do is lower down into my split lunge. I have a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. And from here, we're just going to stand and lunge and stand and lunge. Keeping that strap pulled into the chest. We want the weight of the body in that left heel. Working balance here, abdominals are pulled in nice and tight. Our inner thighs are scissoring in toward each other as we come up to standing tall and our arms are super active. Make sure those shoulders are rolled down the back, no shrugging. Two more. Last one, come down low and hold. We're gonna bring that short strap into the left hand and now if it feels good, you can press that right leg back straight. We still have our weight in that left heel and now we're just gonna go into pulls with our left arm. Keeping that arm tracking near the body and releasing forward. Think of that long spine, you're looking out straight in front of you. You should really feel that burn in your left glute here. Two more. Last one. Go ahead and release that and carefully draw yourself up to standing. Whew. Now, let's turn to the springs. We're going to put on one yellow spring, take off the blue spring. We're going to grab on to the short strap again. And unfortunately, because of the side we started on, my back is going to be to you for this first one. We're going to have that short strap in our left hand. We're going to be facing the carriage, and we're going to come to a sumo squat position. So legs are wide, feet are turned out. When you're ready, we're going to squat down into our sumo squat and lift. So right now, I'm just keeping this rope taut. I'm not pulling it. I'm not using it. My palm is facing in toward me, and I'm just squatting and lifting, squeezing into the inner thighs to come up tall, and then squatting down low. My heels are heavy. One more like this, and then we're going to add on. So on this next one, we're going to squat down. We're going to use the momentum to come up and press. 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 And press. Press. Two more. Last one. Come on down. Now we're going to take that press and we're going to punch toward the foot bar. So we're going to come up, punch and twist. Punch and twist. Punch and twist. Two more. The last one. Come on down. Draw yourself up. We'll hang up that strap. Now, if on those sumos, at the end they're getting really heavy, you can always drop down to the longer strap. That helps a little bit. 
We're gonna hang up the strap now. We're gonna turn back the way we started, facing the back of the reformer. And now I'm going to bring my right hand down onto the shoulder rest. I'm gonna set myself so I'm about midway on the carriage. And then I'm gonna turn my feet slightly toward the right, just a hair. From here, I'm gonna press that left leg back long. So we wanna make sure that left hip is turned down, weight is in the right heel, and then we're gonna come back in. So now let's add on the hand. As we press the left leg out, we press that right arm forward and in. Press out, finding length, and in. Out and in. Two more like this. And last one, hold here. And now we're just going to lower and lift that left leg, keeping it nice and long. We want to keep the spine neutral. So I'm not arching my lower back to get this lift. I'm squeezing into the glute. That right glute should be on fire right now. One more, draw everything in. Let's sit down for just a moment. We'll take the right ankle over that left knee and hinge forward slightly. You can gently press that leg open a little bit more. Just make sure you're not pressing on your knee, you're pressing on that quad. And then we'll come up, unravel, and then let's, before we hit the other side, do a little bit of planking here. So place your new spring back on, or if you know you like something heavier, um, you can do one heavy spring or one red spring. I like a medium spring for this. So we're gonna turn to face the back of the carriage once more. Come on up to our quadruped, quadruped position, and then we're gonna interlace our fingertips, creating that nice triangle. And we're gonna bring it down. I want your fist to be just below the shoulder rest. You can bring your toes to the edge of your standing platform, and when you're ready, you'll inhale to press out into that plank. And we're just gonna hold here, thinking of that long line from your heels, up your back body, out the crown of your head. You're looking straight down, so chin isn't tucked, it's not lifted. Now let's add on our long stretch, inhaling to press the arms forward, exhaling to draw the elbows back under the shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Keeping that pelvis slightly tucked so we make sure that we're not hiking. Two more. Last one. Now we're going to take it up into a pike. So imagine as if there's a string connected to your sacrum. Somebody pulls it, hips go up to the ceiling, and press back out long. Pulling up and pressing out. You're gonna feel that abdominal crunch as you come into that pike and then find that length again. You should start to feel it here in your shoulders too, working a lot of stability. Two more. Last one. Pause. Last thing we're going to do here, you're going to pull your right knee in a little bit, extend it up over that foot bar, and now we're going to flex, rocking back the heel of the left foot, point the toe rocking forward on that left foot. Flexing and pointing with both feet. Four, five, and six. Go ahead and bring that right foot down. We're going to extend the left leg out. We're going to flex and point, flex and point, flex and point. Three more, two, last one. Go ahead and place the feet down. Hold the carriage pose, place the knees down, and let's stretch back into a child's pose. <sighs> Let that chest be heavy, open those knees wide. You can rest your arms on top of the shoulder rest. Now pull that belly button to the spine, round yourself up, and let's step off to 
to the right side of the reformer facing the back. We're on a blue spring, so we're good to start here. We're gonna grab onto that short strap, step yourself about midway on the carriage, and we're going to step the right, or sorry, the left foot back. We're angled slightly toward that back left corner. Interlace the hands and pull that short strap in close to your body. So we've got our split position here now, and we're just going to inhale to lower and exhale to lift. Finding that 90 degree angle with the front leg as you come down, 90 degree angle with the back leg. Weight is in my right heel, standing up nice and tall, and then sinking down. Keeping those hands pulling into my chest. Two more. Last one, we're gonna lower down and hold here. Now you can scoot that left leg back long, take the strap in your right hand, and we're just gonna pull and release. Making sure you still have that weight in your right heel. That glute should be a flame. Three more. Two. One, release forward, stand yourself up tall. We'll place this down. Now let's drop back down to that yellow spring, take your blue off, and we're gonna set up for our sumo. So we're gonna bring our right hand into that short strap. I'm gonna find my sumo squat. I might have a little trouble here because my sock is a little bit slippery on the floor. Once I'm there, I just wanna keep that rope slightly taut, and we're going to lunge and stand, lunge and stand, heels heavy, using my glutes and my inner thighs to squeeze me up tall, sinking down as low as I can. Now we're gonna add that press down, come up and press, squat, press, Two more, last one. Now we take it in that punch, punching toward the foot bar and down. Punch and squat. Those hips facing forward as you twist the upper body toward the foot bar. One more. Come on down, stand tall. We'll walk those feet in, hang up that strap. Last part here, we're gonna turn back to face the back corner, and then our left hand is gonna to come to the shoulder rest. Feet are gonna angle slightly toward that back left corner, and we're gonna extend that right leg out long. Make sure that your hip is dropped, hips are both facing the floor, and then go ahead and drop that leg. So let's add on the press as we lengthen the leg back. Press out, lengthen back, pull in. Press out. Come in. Abdominals are nice and tight here. We are balancing on that left leg. Press out and in. The next time the arm and leg press out, pause. Now we're gonna keep that leg straight, lower and lift. Lower and lift. Left glute should be burning. It's always funny when that stabilizing leg hurts more than anything else. Two more, lower and lift. Last one, lower and lift. Go ahead and come in. Let's turn, sit down on the reformer. Take that left ankle over the right knee and hinge yourself forward slightly. I'm going to come up, I'm going to place one blue spring, and we're going to grab onto our short box and place it on. 
Make sure you lift with your legs, not with your back, as you grab your box. And let's place the box over the shoulder rest, unless you have a reformer where that's not possible, then place it in front. I have blue springs on, which means when I get onto my short box, I'm gonna be very careful, because that's a relatively light spring. We're gonna sit, feet are gonna be on the carriage in front of us, and I want you to reach back and grab onto your short straps. We'll sit up nice and tall, long line from the sits bones out the crown of the head. And we're gonna set up for arm work here. Draw your arms in towards your side, palms facing up. We're gonna press out, hands come in to face each other, open into our hug, close, lift the palms and pull back in. Press out, <clears throat> hug a tree, back in, palms flip up and back in. Moving slow and with control here. Remember that as we're doing our hug a tree, <clears throat> we're keeping our shoulders separate on our back. So I'm not opening my arms so much that my shoulder blades come together. I'm opening them just enough that they can remain wide and then closing in and drawing those elbows into my body. Another thing to think about is as we pull those arms in toward the body, squeeze in toward the trunk. It'll turn your upper arms on a little bit more. You'll get a little more work out of this. Let's do one more here. Press out, open, in, and return. Now we're gonna hinge forward slightly from the hips, keeping that long spine. Arms come up to goal post position. We're gonna inhale as we press the arms out long, ears right by the arms, and then exhale to lower. Again, slow and controlled. This isn't a race. Move with your breath. Keep that long spine, so make sure you're not tucking your chin and looking down at your feet. You're not lifting your chin and looking at the wall ahead of you. I'm looking just about right where my spring would connect to the buttons on my reformer. Two more. Last one. Go ahead and bring those arms down. Let's hang up those straps. And now, let's reach down and put on all of our heavy springs just so we have stability. We don't want to be moving around at all. And then I'm going to have you grab onto a ball if you have one. We're going to bring our feet under our safety strap. And then we'll scoot back onto the box so that our legs can be long, our feet are flexed, and that strap is taut against the top of your foot. I'm going to bring my ball to my belly. Hands are going to come on the opposite side. And now I'm going to scoop my abdominals, pulling my belly button back toward my spine, almost as if this ball is hot and I'm trying to pull my stomach away from it. I'm going to hold this feeling as I round back in space and round forward, diving my head slightly toward my knees. Inhaling back, exhaling forward. As you're moving here, you can round back as, as far as you'd like in space as long as you keep this deep scoop. If you start to feel your back coming to a neutral spot, spine, or God forbid, if you have any arching, you're moving way too much. Make the movement a little bit smaller. Like I've said before, you know, baby steps. If you injure yourself, you really set yourself back because you have weeks of recovery. Maybe you have to see a PT. If you just do the baby steps and allow your body to grow stronger with each movement, you're gonna get to where you wanna go so much faster. Let's do one more here. Come on up tall. Let's grab onto the ball. We have a nice long neutral spine now. Extend the arms out. Make sure that you're not reaching the arms away. We wanna plug those arms into the shoulders. Keep that long spine as you inhale to hinge back, exhale to come forward. Again, you can take this back as far as you can in space, as long as you keep a neutral spine. Really think of finding that length in the waist as you come up tall. Feel taller. Feel that stretching from your sit bones out the crown of your head. One more. 
Go ahead and lower your hands. Take your feet out for a moment. You can set them down on the carriage below you. Let your knees be wide and just hinge forward. Arms can hang down toward the springs or they can just rest on the carriage. Let your head be heavy and shake it no. And then round yourself back up. Let's take this into a side sit up. So I'm gonna place my left foot under my safety strap. I'm going to bring my right knee back toward that back right corner. Once I'm there, I'm gonna stack my hips and stack my shoulders. I like to place my right hand down into the headrest and kind of identify this as my start position. I have a long line from my heel up out the crown of my head. So here's our start position. We're gonna grab the ball, keep it in at your chest. We're gonna inhale as we dip down toward the well, exhale to come up and extend the arms out. Notice I'm only coming up to that start position. We're gonna do six here. This is number three. Really use your breath here at your friend. Four. Five. Last one here. Hold. Hold, 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 hold. And then go ahead and rest your right forearm down. Take your left arm up and over toward the back of the reformer. Get that nice stretch in your side body. Come on up to that start position again. This time I want to extend both arms out in front holding that ball. We're going to take the ball into the right hand and we're going to twist down toward the well. Bring it back up to the left. Twist open toward the ceiling. That was one. Twist down. Twist up. That's two. Let's do four here. Down. Up. That was three. Last one here. Down. And up. That was four. Come back to center. Place that ball down on the headrest. Now walk your hands up either side of the reformer's frame and just let that chest melt down. Get a little traction here. And then carefully walk your hands up and we'll switch over to the other side. Left foot comes out from that safety strap. Right foot goes under. We're going to turn, bring the left knee back toward that back left corner. Make sure that that safety strap is taut over your right foot and ankle. And then we want to stack the hips, stack the shoulders. Left hand comes down into the headrest to identify our start point. When you're ready, ball comes to the chest. We'll lower down. Come up and extend the arms out for six. Five. Use that exhale. Four. Three. Two. And last one. Left forearm comes down. Right arm reaches up and over. A really important thing to think about as we're doing side sit-ups, any variation that we do, is that you want to imagine that you're moving between two panes of glass. So you're not hinged forward, you're not hinged back, you're moving exactly right and left. So let's set up for our twist. Left hand comes down, we're gonna extend the arms out, we're gonna take that ball on our left hand to start, twist down toward the well, come center, twist up toward the ceiling, that's one. Going for four here. Two. Three. Last one, four, place the ball on the headrest, walk the arms up either side of the reformer frame and stretch. Oof, those are intense and so magical. Side sit-ups are one of my favorite things, so I'm gonna try to incorporate them a lot because it's something we just don't do enough of. And you know, honestly, no matter how many I do, walk your hands up carefully, come up to seated, they never get easier, which I actually kind of love and appreciate about them. Before we move on, let's stand up. You can place the ball to the side. We're done with it. We're going to lower our foot bar, and then I want you to put on one yellow spring. Now, if you have a reformer and you put the box over the shoulder rest, we're going to move the box in front of the shoulder rest. We will be pushing against this, so if they're on the other side, you're gonna fall. Make sure your box is in front of your shoulder rest. We're gonna very carefully, we're on the lightest frame, very carefully come to sitting right on the edge of the carriage. Feet are on the standing platform. You're gonna place your forearms back on the box 
and then you're going to rock back. So wiggle down a little bit so that your head and your upper trunk are supported by the box underneath you. My hips are pressing up to the ceiling. My feet are centered right on the standing platform so that my arch is totally supported. So my toes are off a little bit, my heels are off. Arms can come wherever. You can have them on your hips, you can have them resting back behind your neck, that's where I like them. From here, we're just gonna inhale to press back, exhale to pull in. You're gonna be able to tell right away that we're getting into those hamstrings. Keep those hips lifted, abdominals are pulling in and up. This is one of my favorite ways to work the hamstrings. They're really kind of an awkward thing to work properly on the reformer. And this is one way I've found that is easy and really effective. One more like this, and then we're gonna switch our foot position a little bit. Draw in, you're gonna walk those feet forward slightly, come up onto your heels and flex that foot. Squeeze into those glutes to find that lift again. Inhale to press back, exhale to pull in. Now in the first position and in this one, we're able to extend those legs all the way. So go ahead and do that. The next position we're gonna do, you're not gonna be able to extend out all the way and that's fine. We're still gonna get some good work out of it. Your glutes might be feeling this a little bit. Really move with intention here. We're on that light spring. So press away slowly, pull in slowly. Let's do one more here. Come on in. Now we're gonna take the ball of the foot into a high heel position. We're gonna to inhale to press out. You can't go all the way out. Exhale to pull in. Keep the heel high as you move. Keep the hips lifted. Keep those legs pulling in toward the midline so my knees aren't falling out or falling in. They're pointing straight forward at the wall in front of me. Two more. Ooh, last one. Nice. Now, to get off, scoot yourself back a little bit. So now my lower back is in contact with the front of the box and then lower your hips down. I have fallen into the spring wall on this one before, it's not super fun, so really carefully come on off. Let's take our box and let's place it in a long box position. Once we're there, let's reach down, add one red spring, and go ahead and take your yellow off. <clears throat> we're gonna come to line on the box, head is facing the back of the reformer, Chest is gonna be just off the front of the box. We're gonna extend those legs back long so my legs are nice and active. I'm pulling my abdominals in and up and away from the box. They will never actually come up away from the box, but that's the feeling I'm looking for. And then we're gonna grab onto the ropes above the knots. Arms will lengthen out at either side. We'll inhale to pull the fist back toward the hips, melting the chest open toward the back of the carriage. Exhale to lower everything down. Inhale up, find the extension, exhale down. So make sure you press the arms back. You're not shrugging the shoulders up into the ears. Actively press those fists back toward the wall behind you. The next time we peel up, I want you to pause and we're gonna flutter kick those legs, going into a swimmer variation here. Glutes are nice and tight. I'm in my extension and I'm breathing. A lot of people hold their breath in this movement. We don't want that. And lower on down. Let your body be heavy over the front of that box, round forward. I'm gonna take us into triceps next and we're gonna do it in a pyramid today. So find your body's position. Toes are pointing back, legs are strong, glutes are turned on. We're gonna keep looking down into the well this time, no extension. Arms lengthen by either side. We're gonna pull the arms back, squeeze the upper arm in close to the body. Bend at the elbows, straighten. Now lower your arms down. That was one. 
This time we'll pull back and we're going to do two. Bend and straighten, bend and straighten and lower down. This time pull back, three. Bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, straighten and lower the arms down. Now four. Imagine as if you have a beach ball on your back and you're holding it in place with those elbows and release. That was our last one. Go ahead and let your arms walk up either side of the frame and just let your head be heavy. Let's carefully walk ourselves up. Hang up the straps for just a moment. We're going to press up and come to seated facing the back of the reformer. Feet will come into that headrest. Sit up nice and tall. We're going to grab onto the straps. Let's grab on above the rope or above the knot or the clip on your rope again. Now scoot your booty up toward the edge of that box. We're going to inhale as we start tall. Exhale as you tuck the pelvis toward the belly button and begin to round down one vertebrae at a time as slow as you can. Now you can either come to parallel with the box, look up at the ceiling and then curl chin to chest and begin to round up, or if it's available to you, go ahead and open up into extension and look behind you. No matter what position you chose, big inhale, exhale chin to chest first, and then round up the same way you came down, one vertebrae at a time until sitting tall. Let's move through this several times. Tuck that tailbone, roll down slowly, very slow and controlled here. Either stop when parallel or open into extension. Curl chin to chest, arms lengthen forward and round up one vertebrae at a time. Let's do two more here. Now, if you're someone who doesn't quite have the core strength, or sometimes there are just exercises that are harder for us than others, what I always recommend here is place something in between your legs above your knees. So ideally a ball, but if you don't have a ball, you can always go for a yoga block and just place it up above your knees. When you get to that point where you find that sticky spot where it's really hard to keep rounding up without a little momentum, squeeze into that ball and continue to slowly roll yourself up. The more muscles you turn on, the easier it will become. Also, don't forget to use that breath. That strong exhale really helps. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and hang up these straps. We're going to take our long box off, place it to the side. And we're going to get our feet in straps for a little stretch. So let's come back over, bring our feet up. We'll add on a blue spring. So we have one red and one blue, one heavy, one medium. And then go ahead and lie back. We'll grab onto the long straps, place them on the bottom of our feet. Find that neutral spine, lengthen the arms by your side. Legs extend straight up to the ceiling. We're pressing them together. We'll inhale to lower them down to hover just above the foot bar. Exhale to draw them back up. Keeping your spine neutral, keeping the sacrum heavy as you move here. Now we're starting to wind down, so breathe. Inhale and exhale. Relax your facial muscles. Relax your neck muscles. If you're holding tension anywhere, big deep inhale in. On the exhale, begin to release that tension. The next time your legs press down to 45 degrees, pause. Bring heels together, toes apart. Draw the knees in toward the chest, about shoulder width distance apart. And then press out, going into frog. Inhaling to press away. Exhaling to resist the springs in. Keeping those heels firmly planted together. Two 
Two more here. Last one. Draw the knees in. We're going to bring the feet together, knees together, so we're back in parallel. Extend the legs up, and let's go into circles. We'll start by lowering the legs away, opening the legs out wide, circling them back toward the head, drawing them back together, and then starting a new circle. You know, we all want to do those big, beautiful circles, really feel that stretch, but I also want you to be mindful of your pelvis. We want that pelvis to stay nice and stable here as we're circling. So I like to put my hands on my hips. Make sure that I'm not losing that neutral pelvis as I circle around. One more here after this guy. We'll meet with our legs straight up to the ceiling and we'll reverse, opening the legs out, pressing them down toward the foot bar, drawing them together and lifting up. Again, here, keep the sacrum heavy, keep the pelvis neutral. Getting a little pop in action here. Let's do two more. Last one. Legs drop to the ceiling, grab a hold of your ropes, now, if you'd like, you can allow that sacrum to peel up off the mat. You can pull gently on your ropes, pulling those feet closer towards your head, really enjoying that stretch up the hamstrings and the back of the leg, back of the calf. Oh. Now, keep a hold of the ropes, open your legs out to a wide V, and just rock gently side to side, massaging the lower back. And still tug gently on those ropes. Carefully draw the legs together, bend the knees in. We'll take off our straps, hang them up. Carefully sit yourself up. You guys, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed today's workout. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. More videos are coming your way. Thanks so much for joining me today.